I grew up in an informal settlement called Misi in the lower district of Malawi. I was seven years old when a good friend of mine, James Pili, whom I used to play football with, suddenly fell ill and he was admitted to the hospital. Two days later, James passed away. I lost a very good friend and our football team lost a star player. A series of similar deaths followed. Visiting health workers explained to us that poor sanitation had caused cholera to spread around the village. Unfortunately, the good sanitation measures that they had explained to us were hard to achieve due to the poor conditions that we were subjected to, such as living in mud huts, drinking untreated water from rivers that were near pit latrines, one toilet being used by many community members. Years later, I had a chance to visit one of my aunties in the city of Lilongwe, Area 3, for the first time. Upon arrival, I was astonished with everything that I saw. Proper tarmac roads with good drainage systems and trees lining it. Fences providing security to the compounds. Clean running water inside the houses and even a toilet inside the houses that even flushes. I was like, wow, so people live like this. My eyes became opened. I then later on in life went to University of Malawi, the Polytechnic, to study architecture so that I could design simple houses that are safe and affordable to everybody. As a student, I would ask myself some questions like, how do we provide adequate housing? How do we provide proper road network systems that have proper drainage systems? How do we do all this with a minimum budget? How do we design for a slum that has already developed? As much as we faced such challenges as students, but these are the same challenges that low-income countries are now facing all over the world. So let me now share with you some three simple ideas that I discovered in trying to combat the challenge of providing low, affordable low-cost housing to, to low in, middle-income people. The first breakthrough idea is courtyard designing. A courtyard design is whereby we put people in a small space, but in the most comfortable and accepted way. So in a project of providing more than 300 houses, in Likuni Meadows, in the city of Lilongwe, I was challenged to come up with a local design that responds to people's culture. We first came up with row houses. A row house is a combination of six houses in a row. So after constructing 74 houses, we noticed that the design was taking up a lot of space. So we thought of coming up with something better that would utilize space, since with the client's budget, going up wasn't an option. So realizing that the, the raw design had a front garden and a back garden, we thought of coming up with a design that would have a shared garden, thereby saving land that was being utilized as a front garden in the raw housing typology. So we eventually landed into a courtyard design, which is a rectangular design that has a tree in the middle symbolizing our African culture in community gatherings. So a tree, it's very important in our culture because it brings people together. When a chief calls for a meeting, or a grandfather would like to tell a story, usually it would traditionally happen under a tree. So we thought it was that we have a tree right in the middle and everything radiates from it. So trees are also important elements in sustainable environments. So with our courtyard design, it provided a good platform for social interaction for kids. So parents can stay inside the houses while their kids are playing in a safe environment uh, in the courtyard. Apart from security, a courtyard also provides natural ventilation as well as uh, natural lighting. So we are trying to bring people in a decent way, thereby keeping our culture by providing uh, by just making it hybrid. The second approach is through repairing solutions. For the slums that have already developed, 
there's nothing much that we can do. We cannot wake up one day and perish up all the slums and build new houses for, for people living in slums. So in a project of uh, slum upgrading that I was part of in Dandili and Chinsapo, together with the community, we studied the slum in detail, providing some services that had proper road network systems with good drainage, proper kiosks that would provide clean water, an eco toilet that has a shower. So the toilet is designed in a way that it decomposes human waste and to be used later as fertilizer. And the water from the bathroom to be used in the toilet. So the third approach is through incremental designing. An incremental design is simply building a house gradually, whereby one can start building one part of the house and enjoys living in that part while finishing the other part of the house slowly, depending on how the family would find the money. So in this case, the other part to my far right, one can live in that house and the other part can be built later. We piloted this project in Salima by starting with uh, 21 houses and now the idea has spread all over Salima and communities are able to access the incremental designs from the local authority right there in Salima. So we have shown that these three simple designs can change the lives of people living in, in, in informal settlements. So together in Malawi, we can do something about it. Malawi as of now is currently experiencing high urbanization rate with a growing population of 18 million people, which calls for a demand for 200,000 houses each and every year to be accessible to low income people. So with these three simple ideas, we can do it all together. We can spread these simple ideas without money and change the lives of people living in an informal settlement. And if these ideas spread, we can prevent the soul of seeing, young, of seeing people dying of cholera because of where they live. Thank you very much.